Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today we're going to do some non-directional coloring. Most of my coloring typically has a light source in the right or left hand side. But here I'm creating these topiaries with non-directional lighting. So I'm shading from the outside in. Lots of people do it that way. Perfectly fine. But I'm going to use these cute stamps from Purple Onion, Stacy Yakula's new art. And for the sun, I used one of the topiaries. I just masked it out when I started doing my stamping and then finished it with a little circle template. You could just draw it yourself with a circle, but I wanted it to feel like it had the flavor of this. And since it was a sketchy look, it allowed me to just take my Copic Multiliner and finish off that circle and add some dots and things. So it looks like it kind of fits with the rest of the stamps. For the coloring, I decided I wanted some bright and happy colors, not just your green topiaries, but I wanted to make them all different colors. And I chose some pinks. And this is a bunch of the RVs. I chose a medium, a dark, and a light. And I always put my light color down first. And I decided on this one I wanted to, at least with this color, get it sprinkled across the image. And when you have the same color across the image, in a couple of different places, it sort of pulls it all together. And that's what I want to do with all these colors. You can see here, I'm doing my shading completely on the outside edges, all the dark colors going all the way around the outside, not really worrying about light source other than maybe a little bit more on the bottom than on the top, because generally that makes things look a little bit more grounded, but you can certainly color without a light source. Don't feel like just because you don't understand shading, that you can't color and it won't look perfectly beautiful because this image is going to look really cute when I'm done anyway, even if I'm not doing directional lighting. On these little triangles, I'm just going to put shading on either side. And on the mouse, I'm going to do a little bit on the inside of his ears just to make it a little bit deeper in there. And then take my mid-tone and soften those out. And then I'll go over it again with my light color. That's my tr traditional routine with most of my coloring is to start with the light, go to the dark, medium, and then the light again to smooth things out. Next, I wanted to use some greens. And on this one, I'm gonna use some YG colors. And I'm you know, going to do the same deal. I'm gonna put my light color down first. I'll spread it out across the image so I can make sure that I get some decent color all the way around. I was careful to make sure that any of the colors that are going to be in the mouse or in his outfit are not going to be in that little circle behind him. That's the same circle as the sun, so you can't see much of it, but I want to make sure that you know that one's going to be yellow down there, so I'm not going to use any yellow in him because that will then take away from the effect of, of him being the most important part of the image. Now this color that I'm using here is a G99. It's not a YG color. It may not be a color that you would normally pick to go with a YG03. But what I want to share is that when you're choosing your colors, you can pick anything. I mean, honestly, you can pick anything. This is not even something that is on my list of favorite colors that I put on my website. I posted this chart with a bunch of favorite blending groups. And I'm choosing some colors that are from the, these groups some colors that are not. Maybe I will, maybe I won't sometimes. It doesn't really matter. Just because it's on that favorite list, people always want to know favorites, what colors do work. I su suggested a YG17 as the midtone for this blending group and a YG99. But I suggested that because I think a YG17 has a little more flexibility because you can mix that one with your regular grass green type of colors as well as with the YGs, the, the really light olive greens like these. So there's an unlimited number of colors you can choose. In the Copic Jumpstart class, I give you some alternate colors for a lot of the ones that I'm, I've selected for class, but it doesn't mean you have to use them. You can go outside of the charts. You can go outside of the lists very easily. So if you've wondered about whether or not you should take that class, you're welcome to do it with the markers that you have. The object was to try to get us to use the colors that we already own and not have to go out and buy a bajillion new markers. The list was really there for those who have never bought anything and just wanted something to start with. 
it's very difficult to make up a list of colors to give to anybody for anything because your colors that you like are going to be different than the colors that I like. But anyway, I am continuing along with my shading. On the leaves on him, I did my shading from the inside to the outside just to make some variance on one part of the image. The rest of it is all shaded from the outside to the inside. So just so you know why I did that, I wanted more emphasis on that little leaf because I think him wearing a little leaf on his head is hilarious. Next, I wanted to do my sun and that little topiary that's behind him with the yellow. And I wanted to add a little bit of the orange color to it because I wanted to make it a really nice, rich yellow. Now, you know me, if you've watched many of my videos, Y17 makes it into just about everything. Putting the orange around the outside edge gives me the opportunity to use Y17 as my midtone. So that's what I'm doing. It'll make my sun feel a little bit on the orangey side, but I'm leaving some of that yellow highlight in the center so that I end up with uh, a nice glow to it. That's one of the things that directional, uh, non-directional lighting does is make everything almost looks like it's glowing from the center. I'm gonna apologize for my raspy voice for whatever reason today, I am sounding like a frog. For the orange one, I wanted to do an orange topiary, but I wanted to use the yellow as the highlight, that Y17. So I put that color down first. And I'm gonna do the same thing on some of the stripes on this little, little cone topiary. Put that base color down and then add my RV14. Yes, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do orange and I'm gonna use an RV for the shadow color. And you can certainly get away with that. So think outside the box when you're looking for colors. I was looking for colors that were just already out on my desk. And I could have gone and picked another red, that sort of thing. And it would have given it a different flavor if I used a different red, but it still would have worked because they're on the same kind of colors on the color wheel, on that same, same side of the color wheel. They're almost analogous, not quite, but they are close. And it was fun to just see how that would work. Now, when I went in with my Y17, I was getting kind of flat because that Y17 was starting to erase some of that color. And it's one of those things that you have to keep an eye on that you don't use too much of either your medium tone or your light tone because everything can look the same. So I went in with some YR04 and that flattened it out even more. So then I had to go back in again with a little bit of the red on the outside. So I used that RV14 again. And you can go over Copic markers over and over and over again, and you generally will not make the paper pill up or anything. So feel free to continue to work at it. I keep my eyes peeled and look at my image, the pieces that I've already colored, because as they dry, they change a little bit because the alcohol ink inside of the, the pens begins to evaporate and it leaves just the color behind. And therefore you may see a little bit of different things once things get a little bit dry on your paper. You can also see whether things have bled or not, whether the blending stayed or whether it got funky on you, all that sort of thing. And so now I'm gonna do my BG shadows. And I found something interesting on this when I was using BG23 for my light and BG13 for my medium. I was not expecting, I don't know why, I just never noticed it, that BG23 is lighter than BG13. Doesn't make numerical sense, but it is what it is. So you need to play with your markers to find out exactly what each of the colors is going to do and which ones you want to select. And just because somebody posts to use a certain number, you want to try it yourself and test it out and see what happens and get to know your markers, the colors that you have and that sort of thing in order to know what is going to happen when you start doing your own coloring. Now on my mouse, I'm using a very dark W5 for some of my dark areas. You may feel uncomfortable about using quite that much dark color to put around your mouse. And I wanna show you that I can lighten up that dark color. So if you start too dark, you need to be careful so you don't get bleeding going on, but you can go over it. I'm going over it with the W2 and it is gonna soften a bunch of that dark color. So the places where it felt like it was way too much, the lighter markers act like colorless blender sometimes, and they can erase or push away color. But remember, they're pushing away color, so if you get a lot of ink in there, 
and you're not allowing any time for it to dry, it's going to start bleeding on you. But you can see his face didn't come out really dark after it looked like it was going to. I wanted to add a little bit of a base to this, so I took some YGs and made a little line of the darker color and then just blended it out toward the bottom with a super light color. The more zeros, the lighter the color. And then I added a little bit of glow around my sun as well with a Y02 and then I went around that with a little bit of colorless blender. I mounted it onto a piece of white cardstock with the front panel popped up a little bit. And here's another one with the other, the other set of topiaries that they've just come out with in the release. Again, another perfect little shape to use when you're practicing your directional shading, which you'll learn in the Copic Jumpstart class, which is in the description down below if you want to sign up for that. It starts May 27th, and I hope to see you in class because it's going to be a lot of fun. And here are a couple of other videos using some purple onion images if you'd like to check out any of those. All the supplies are linked in the description down below as well as over on my blog. And you can hit that subscribe button if you're not yet a subscriber. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye, guys.